Greetings fellow learners, in this video we are going to look at Detter, the detection transformer. So let's get to it. Now we're going to start our discussion with what is object detection. It involves the localization and classification of objects in an image. So localization is drawing bounding boxes around objects and classification is determining what those objects represent. In 2015, faster RCNN emerged as the state of the art for object detection. And it looked kind of something like this, where we would take an image, we would generate anchors. These are basically prior bounding boxes where we determine different aspect ratios and sizes for thousands of squares over here. And then we kind of like slightly adjust each of these to get some predictions of whether they actually encapsulate objects. Then we perform non-maximum suppression to remove overlapping bounding boxes to eventually get a set of bounding box object proposals or region proposals. These are where objects can be present. And then we adjust these and perform actual cl classifications with objects that we cared about in order to perform like true object detection after that, and then perform NMS after this in order to get the final set of localizations and classifications. Now, for more information on this network, I have an entire video on faster RCNN, so I'll delegate the details to that. Now, the main issue though with this architecture is that it's pretty complex. For example, we would have to design anchors, you know, by hand, which involves understanding or like determining what the size and aspect ratios of the prior boxes, what they should be. And then there's also a bunch of post-processing, particularly like non-maximum suppression. And this requires us to determine a threshold of, okay, if two bounding boxes are overlapping, when should we remove them at what threshold? And these design choices can greatly affect performance. So how do we deal with this? Well, seeing the recent success of transformer-based architectures in NLP tasks, specifically from like attention is all you need from 2017 through like 2020 with like BERT and GPT, researchers thought of using this transformer-based architecture in object detection. And so we have Detter. So Detter is an object detection framework that's built on transformers. It's simpler than faster RCNN, yet it achieves similar performance with also a similar speed. And let's take a look at exactly how this happens and how it's trained. So in order to train Detter, we first pre-train ResNet on image recognition. So you can imagine each of these are convolution activation pooling blocks with residual connections, and that's why this network can be extremely deep. And we pass in an image and we can get an object classification. And so we can train this ResNet architecture. Then we can remove that last FC layer to create the convolution backbone for Detter. So you can imagine if we pass an image here of H cross W for like RGB three channels, we can get this tensor that represents the image where this little H is like 32 times smaller than this big H. This little W is 32 times smaller than this big W. And there's like 2048 channels here. And then we're now going to use it in our Detter architecture. So for training our end-to-end -end model here, Detter comprises of like three major components. One is this like convolution block section. Another is this transformer block section. And then we have something called Hungarian matching. So let's talk about each of these components. So we first take our input image and pass it to our ResNet backbone in order to get our tensor that represents the image. We then perform a pointwise convolution to adjust the number of channels here to let's say 256. And this is done to eventually pass it in or you know, prepare this data for passing in to the transformer block. So we then take this 
tensor and we flatten it such that this final matrix is HW cross 256. The idea here is that each of these 256 dimensional vectors will represent some like chunks of information or be a rich representation of features of a of the image in a specific section. So this could be like one of the representations of the 256 dimensional vector. Then over here too, we might have another 256 dimensional vector that represents this section of the image, probably like the edges, the curves, the texture, and so on. So because they represent now different sections of the image, we will also add positional encodings here. Now, these are non-learnable parameters, so that means that they're not gonna be updated by backpropagation, but they are going to be like sine, cosine functions. So this is basically saying this 256 dimensional vector is going to be position one. This 256 dimensional vector will be position two and so on. Next, we pass it into the encoder decoder architecture of our transformer. And you can kind of see that this architecture is very similar to the attention is all you need paper from 2017. Again, I've done a video on this topic too, so I will link to that in the description. But effectively, this transformer encoder is going to have self-attention. It's going to perform self-attention. So you can imagine each of these 256 dimensional vectors will pass through the encoder and will thus encode some like global context. So it'll be like richer representations effectively of some pieces of the image. Next in our transformer decoder, the input is going to be a bunch of vectors known as object queries. You can think of these as placeholders for objects that will eventually be detected in the image. So each of these are effectively learnable parameters, which means that they're going to be updated via backpropagation. They can be randomly initialized to start with, but the learnable parameters. And we have 100 of these vectors. This is because for now, let's assume that we want to, for a given image, detect at most 100 objects in that image. Hence, we have 100 cross 256 dimensional matrix over here. We pass this as input to the transformer decoder. Through cross attention, it's going to get information about the image pieces over here. And once it encodes that information through self and cross attention, the output vectors, there's gonna be a hundred of these vectors and each vector here is now going to represent an actual object. So this 256 dimension vector that represents an object is not very interpretable. And so we're going to pass it through some FC layers that are going to encode it into a 11 dimensional vector and a four dimensional vector. And we do this for 100 of these, each of these, like there's 100 cases for 100 of them, we pass through the same FC layer to get 11 dimensional vectors and the same FC layer over here to get four dimensional vectors. And why 11 dimensions? Well, let's assume that for this uh, object detection task, there are 10 classes of objects that are possible to detect. And the 11th one is going to be the background class. And why four dimensions over here? Well, this is for localization. To, like They can represent the X and Y, that's like the coordinates of the center of the object or the bounding box. And then the height and the width in pixels of the bounding box. So we can represent the bounding box by four numbers. So effectively, this 256 dimensional vector can give us the localization as well as probability distribution of classes of the object. And so if you actually like encode this and put this into an image, you'll get the predictions that look like this. There's like a hundred potentially bounding boxes and each of these bounding boxes is going to be associated with some probability distribution. I just put like dog for some of them, but it's actually each of the boxes will have like 11 of these predictions of probabilities. Now for these predictions, we have a ground truth label for the image. That's the actual bounding box ar around the actual object of interest. And here we perform the third phase, which is known as Hungarian matching. 
Hungarian matching involves creating a one-to-one mapping of these ground truth bounding box along with one of these predictions. So in this case, what we want to do is we want to select the optimal prediction here that will correspond to this object. And we want the other 99 to basically be matched to no object. And this is effectively going to, this is what we see here. So we have like one of these predictions that's going to be mapped to the bounding box. One of these predictions here mapped to this prediction here. And the remaining 99 of them are mapped to no object. And this is required because we wanted to have a ground truth label for all of these 100 predictions here. And Hungarian matching allows us to find that ground truth label or matching. So we can now perform cross entropy loss as well as a smooth L1 loss. So cross entropy loss, basically this will have like 100 terms, right? So each of those predictions, we have 100 of them. 99 of these should predict no box. So we'll look at like the probabilities of predicting no box for 99 of them. But for the one that's matched to this actual ground truth, we'll look at the actual like dog prediction, which is like 0.87 here. And so we compute a cross entropy loss. This smooth L1 loss is basically um, the bounding box overlap, right? Larger the overlap of this box and this ground truth box, then smaller is this loss. And it's only going to be for the actual cases where there is an object, because for the background cases, we, we exclude them. There is no bounding box, so there will be no smooth L1 contribution to this loss. And so there will be no contribution to this smooth L1 loss. And then we can aggregate both of these losses together in order to create the final loss here. And so this is the entire end-to-end -end architecture, which we then train via backpropagation. So this loss is effectively going to be updating all the parameters of the FC layers, the transformer decoder. These object queries are going to be learned, backpropagates through the encoder. And this is not going to be learned here. These are fixed in position embeddings. But the convolution layers over here and the ResNet architecture are also going to be learned and hence, training happens via backpropagation. Now for inference, the architecture looks a little bit more simplified. It no longer has the Hungarian matching and also there is no loss computation because there is no ground truth labels. And so we take an image, we pass it through the convolution block in order to get this HW cross 256 dimensional matrix. Add positional encodings from sine cosine, pass it through the transformer encoder to get global context encoded in these vectors. Each vector represents some patch of like, you know, some sections of the image. We then now take these learned object queries, pass them into the decoder. These are placeholders for objects. So they will take in information about the image that has been learned. And then each of these are now going to represent objects of interest. And we can then make them, you know, we'll transform each 256 dimensional vector into 11 dimensional vector to represent probability distribution of classes and a four dimensional vector to represent the localization of bounding boxes. And the idea here is, you know, if there is like in this case, there's only one object of interest. The idea is that for 99 of these records or rows, the in 99 of those probability distribution predictions, the background prediction should be the highest. And so we don't need to pay attention to its corresponding localization. But for one of them, ideally, it would say like, you know, the bounding box prediction, the class probability prediction of dog will be like, you know, what does it say? Like 87%. The class probability of like cat is 6% and so on. And so it has the dog prediction over here. We look at its corresponding localization in order to get the bounding box, which would look like this. And so we don't really need like non-maximum suppression or any other post-processing here, which is fantastic as it simplifies our architecture. So let's now look at performance. So this is kind of a snapshot of a table from the paper where we have different versions of faster RCNN and different versions of Detter. 
Now, this FPS is frames per second, which basically indicates speed, how fast these are at inference. Higher the numbers here, that means higher is the speed. And AP over here indicates average precision. So higher these numbers indicates higher performance. So what you can kind of see here is that both like overall Deader and faster RCNN have similar speeds and also kind of similar and comparable performances. But one thing to note is that Deader is a simpler architecture, but faster RCNN is better at detecting smaller objects. So APS here is the performance on smaller objects where you can kind of see that there is a little bit of a bigger difference. Whereas, you know, for large objects, Deader seems to still be pretty good almost across the board. So yeah, I hope all of this now makes sense. Quiz time. Have you been paying attention? Let's quiz you to find out. Which of these statements is false about the vanilla Deader? A. Deader has no heavy post processing. B. Deader requires longer training time than faster RCNN. C. Deader detects small objects better than faster RCNN. Or D, Hungarian matching is used to match predictions to ground truth boxes. I'll give you a few seconds to answer this question. The correct option is C. Did you get it right? Please comment your thoughts and reasonings down in the comments below and let's have a discussion. And at this point, if you think I do deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like because it will help me out a lot. Now that's gonna do it for quiz time, but before we go, let's generate a summary. In this video, we looked at Deter, which is the detection transformer. We started with a discussion on object detection and then compared it to first the soda of 2015, which was faster RCNN. However, this architecture was very complex as it had many design choices that could greatly affect performance. Then to deal with this and seeing also the recent success of like transformer-based architectures, Deter was born. So Deter is an object detection framework which was built on transformers it's simpler than faster RCNN, yet it achieves similar performance. We also then took a look at how Deter is trained via this architecture, and also how inference is made as well. And then we ended with a comparison on performance and speed with Deter and faster RCNN. So that's all I have today. Thank you all so much for watching. All the resources, including the slides and the papers and references to other videos will be down in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. If you think I deserve it, please do consider giving this video a like and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.